Throughout your teaching career, the odds of you having a child with special needs in your class is extremely high. This could be a child with a developmental delay, maybe a child on the autism spectrum, it could also be a child that's struggling with trauma and other mental health concerns. Teaching these kids can be challenging. Well, with my 11 years of experience educating these kids, today I'm gonna show you a really great technique that allows these kids to be successful in your classroom. Welcome to the Awareness Module. How's it going everybody? PJ here from the Awareness Module where we are bridging the gaps between life and education. On this channel, we discuss how to influence young minds so that they can find success not just in the classrooms, but ultimately in their lives. If that sounds appealing to you, make sure to hit that subscribe button below so you get all the latest videos. The technique I'm about to show you in just a moment will allow you to fill portions of the day with academic activities that will help the child feel confident in their learning. Because of this, you're going to see a lot less behavior. Recently, I was working with a child in kindergarten and I found it a lot more challenging to get that child to change their indoor outdoor shoes than I did to get them to finish an academic workload. And I've had results like this for years. And I get those results by using what I call a consecutive task based system. task system is basically a consecutive flow of skill-based exercises intended to test for knowledge and ability. Four to six of these tasks are strung together in a session and that session is meant to be completed in one educational block. I find it useful to use a visual strip while you're doing this and it just allows the child to know what the next task is going to be and when ultimately is the session going to be over. It also really helps to make sure that the tasks are short they're really easy to understand and they coincide with some sort of learning outcome. Now, anyone who works with autism is gonna recognize this system pretty quickly, but what a lot of people don't realize is that this system can be adapted and tweaked to help a wide range of kids with special needs. So what do these tasks look like? Well, a task can be pretty much anything. It could be a puzzle, a game, a worksheet, a toy, Basically anything that the child finds interesting and a little bit challenging. It should preferably relate to an IEP goal, but I've used a lot of tasks that are just fun, maybe to introduce a new topic or new concept, or sometimes I use a fun task at the very end of this session as kind of like a reward for finishing everything else. It's important that each task is a little bit different. You don't want each task to be a different worksheet. It's not very exciting and you're gonna find behavior starts to rise pretty quick. I try and throw in things that are tactile, something that is a bit of like a puzzle, then I'll do a worksheet as one of the tasks and so on and so forth. And I might end with, like I said, something enjoyable like an iPad app that again relates to that specific uh, outcome like a language art outcome or something like that so I want the task to be interesting short a lot of variety um, the trick here is that it's gonna take some trial and error you're gonna have to try a lot of different things and some things will work and some things won't here's some examples of stuff that I've used in the past
finding the resources for these tasks is actually pretty easy. I usually start by scouring a room and seeing what's available. Sometimes there's a game or a puzzle or a toy that I can adapt for something specific. For example, I was once working with a child and he had trouble with spatial recognition and so I would just use marble works and he, I gave him a certain amount of pieces and marble works and I told him that the marble has to hit each individual piece in order to finish the task and it wasn't lengthy it wasn't hard it wasn't frustrating for the child but it was definitely a little bit of a challenge um, and which he kind of enjoyed and he got better and better at it over time and I would just simply then add more pieces to the task as he got better at it. So I like to start with something tactile like that and it usually comes from just something in the classroom that's there. Then I usually go to something already made, something like uh, Pinterest, Teachers Paying Teachers. There is a ton of amazing bloggers out there who make really great printable stuff and I'll usually go online and see what I can find. Now, you usually have to pay for it, but some bloggers have some really great materials and they say, hey, you know, sign up for my newsletter and I'll give it to you for free. So there's a lot of great resources out there. If you want free stuff, it's just gonna take you a little bit more time and you have to root through and it's just gonna be a little bit more challenging. So that's usually where I go next. And then last thing I do is I usually look for a specific curriculum. So sometimes in an IEP goal, there might be a goal to implement a very particular curriculum. So what I'll do is I'll add that curriculum as one of the tasks in a session. A lot of times what I find teachers try and do is they try and just get make the curriculum a lot harder than it needs to be and they try and do the session of just this curriculum and the kids usually just tune out or it's just too much and you start seeing behavior and all that stuff but I find if it's just one of the tasks in a session they're not opposed to it they know it's going to be over pretty soon and that way I can lengthen out that curriculum right if I'm just putting it in a little bit here and there a little bit here and there I can kind of use that curriculum all year long so that's very very helpful so those are the three places that I look at mainly. Now, I wish I could tell you that this is the perfect system, but of course, there is no perfect system. The main downfall here is that this is going to take you some time to set up, right? You gotta go online to find resources. You gotta find it, download it, print it, cut it out, paste it all together, make it look pretty, laminate it, cut it all out again. It's gonna take you a lot of time to do this. I often use other kids in the class to maybe help me with some of the processes, but it is gonna take you a little bit of time. Now, keep in mind, repetition is a great way for special needs kids to learn. I find that when we're constantly implementing something new with these special needs kids, it's just frustrating and they get overloaded and again, you start to see that behavior come out. So use repetition, get a really solid, good set of tasks for each subject. So I usually get a bunch of really great tasks for language arts, a bunch of really great tasks for math, a bunch of really great tasks for a, maybe a life skill of some sort. And I use those same tasks for like four to six months. I'm not changing things up all the time. I might make a task a little more challenging, but I'm not reinventing the wheel every single time. So yes, it's gonna take you some time on the front end, but you're gonna be, you're gonna be able to use that for a long period of time. Another thing to keep in mind is that once you have those resources, guess what? You're always gonna have those resources. So once you start making these things, you have a, a bank of them, you're gonna have a really solid foundation to work off of. So there is a downfall, but trust me, it is very, very much worth it. Okay, why does this work? What's the science behind it? Let me explain it to you very quickly. Basically what we're trying to do here is we're trying to move a lot of cognitive functioning to a subconscious level. By using this system, what we're doing is we're eliminating a lot of useless information that just overloads the computer, so to speak. So we're greatly decreasing the amount of explanation time so they're not processing what we're trying to explain. We've gotten rid of that. And you're also removing a lot of the output expectations so they don't have to think so much about what they need to actually do. We eliminate a lot of this extra stuff. What it allows that child to do is to very cleanly access the executive functioning parts of their brain. And then you start to see what they can actually do. Then you start to see what they actually know. And a lot of the times these kids know a lot more than you think they do. The problem is, is they're just being overloaded by information that doesn't matter. By using a task-based system, you drastically simplify things for them so that they can access that thinking part of their brain a lot easier.
Okay, I've talked enough now. You've got a brand new tool to go and try, the consecutive task-based system. It is absolutely foundationally important for educating kids with special needs. And I just wanna take a moment and thank you for watching this video, mainly because I've worked with these kids for a very, very long time, and the sad reality is those kids normally just fall through the cracks. The fact that you've taken the time to research how you can help educate those kids says a lot about you as a teacher. And I just really wanna thank you and commend you for taking the time to find this stuff and figure out how you can help that kid. You know, the reality is you might be the only teacher in that child's education career who's actually going that extra mile to try and help them out. And you're gonna see some pretty amazing things out of that kid. You're gonna to start to see what that child is capable of and it's gonna blow your mind. So thank you so much for taking the time to check this out and hopefully you implement some of these things. If you need to get a hold of me, you can just leave a comment in the comment section below. You can also get a hold of me at theawarenessmodule.com or email me at info at I'm more than happy to help you there. You know what's really interesting about if, if you implement this and start doing these things is you're going to be the resident expert in your school. You will be that person that everyone turns to to try and figure out what to do. You will be an expert very, very quickly. So I look forward to hearing from you. Anything I can do to help, I'm right here. You know where to find me. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you next time.